Why is it that you're doing that and I'm doing and I'm not doing that? Why you have that desire and I don't necessarily have that desire? And I would judge myself a lot of times based on her. Amen. Looking at her and, and seeing her love and fervency for God and say, in me it ain't there. And so I will always go back. God, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. God, I'm sorry. I, I didn't do anything wrong, God. I, I, I didn't commit an act of sin, but forgive me because even though I prayed this sinner's prayer and I confessed you as Lord, Lord, I'm not sure if I'm saved because I'm looking at these other people, amen, who are doing things that I think is of you. And I'm not doing those things. I'm not measuring up. But what I was not measuring up was not in God's word. I was measured, not measuring up in my own self. Because I was using them as my ruler and not God. I was using them as the, my example and not Jesus. And so measuring myself up against them, I kept seeing myself falling short, falling short, falling short, falling short. And I go back, oh God, oh God, please save me. Oh God, please save me. Oh God, please save me. And I was doing that over and over and over and over again and over again. And I'll never forget in 1998, I was in Sears. Amen. And I was feeling so bad. I was feeling so bad. I was looking for a hot water heater for the house. And I was feeling so bad because it seemed like I was thinking like this. How did people doing things and I wasn't doing it? And I walk around the city looking at hot water heat and I said, God, I'm going to start over right now because apparently I'm not saved. I'm not saved. So God, I'm going to start over right now with you. I'm going to say the sinner's prayer. Amen. And I'm going to say this right now. And I went through the sinner's prayer, my man. I've confessed Jesus as my Lord. I said, I believe that God, that he died for the sins of the world, that God raised him up as he promised us. And, and based on that, I'm saying, John 1, 12 says, he that first minute has received him, to them gave him power, become sons of God. God, I receive you. And I went through that whole spiel, prophet, in, in, in series that day, amen, and, and, and came out, came back home that, that was on Wednesday or Thursday, came back home that Saturday, cutting grass, and all of a sudden, God, I, I'm not like these people. Why ain't I saved? Why ain't I saved? Why ain't I saved? And I kept measuring myself, kept measuring myself, kept measuring myself against people. And finally, I think God has got tired of it. God said, Julius, take a step. Trust him. Because I want to trust him. Amen. I, I hear people have these revelations. Amen. They, they see God. They see the angels. They see God talking. They hear God talking to them. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, why, why ain't I? Why ain't I? Why ain't I? Why, why do I don't see angels? Why is it I don't see I don't see God? Why is it I don't hear God talking to me? Why is it I don't hear? Why, why is it? Why is it? Why is it? And a constant why? Constant why? Constant why? Constant why? And continue to beat myself down. Continue to beat myself down because I was continually comparing myself to other people. Always measuring myself up against other people. And finally, like I said, God got tired. He said, you're using the wrong measure. He said, you're measuring yourself against people. You need to measure yourself against Jesus. And then I said, oh God, how can I measure myself up against Jesus? Jesus is all this righteous. Jesus is all this perfect. He never sinned. He never said one bad thing. He never had one bad thought. How can I measure myself up against Jesus? And he says, he said, son, remember this. Jesus was a man subject to lack of passions as you are. He could have sinned at any time. The thing about Jesus was he chose not to sin. He made a decision not to sin. And that did something for me. That that sort of removed some of that burden from me. Because now I'm not measuring myself against people. Amen. Because sometimes, and I'm not trying to be judgmental when I say this, but sometimes folks say things, they ain't what they say they are. Amen. Sometimes people put forth an image about themselves. Amen. And that image looks so good. But behind closed doors, they ain't what they say they are. Amen. Some of the folks will say, I don't ever, ever sin for sinning. You say, why do you say that, Richard? Because there are two types of sin. 
There's the sins of commission and the sins of omission. And most times when people say, I don't sin, they're talking about sins of commission. Meaning, I have not done something wrong. But they're not talking about sins of omission where God said, do something, and they didn't do it. God said, give, and they don't give. God said, pray for somebody, and they don't pray. God said, go into this country and preach the gospel, and they don't go. So, on one side, yeah, they put forth this image that I kept measuring myself up against. Amen. But then I was not going behind the closed doors and find out what they were doing. But I looked at Jesus and I realized that I had a consistent picture of Jesus. I saw a man like myself. Amen. That had flesh, was uh, subject to temptations like myself. And so I began to follow that path. I didn't make the strides I wanted to make, but I began to change. I began to make a different, take a different approach to life. Because now, instead of judging myself against this person and that apostle and that prophet and that evangelist and that pastor and that teacher and that saint and that missionary and that this person and that person, I made myself against Jesus. I made myself against Jesus. And finally I realized the thing that made Jesus unique was Jesus made a commitment. He made a decision. He will serve God. 